these days, eh, the biggest challenges of news editors is which crime story to headline. You know why? Because while he's busy typing, or she is busy typing away, you know, gunshots as land guards and police clash in so so and so over state land. While you're just about ending that story, you hear a better one. Too dead as dogs slap, so shoot, something. It's, it's just crime stories are like, it's like tomatoes. They're quite cheap, you know. And before you know, a member of investigative lion IP, or lion nose shot dead. Or member of the, or, uh, the, or how do you say, um, uh, member of the lion of the tribe of Pram Pram assaulted by state-sponsored tax. Just a crime is becoming a daily occurrence and you can almost go to bed and wake up and be sure that tomorrow when you turn on your television or your, your TV set, you're going to hear something relating to crime. We all don't know why. But so it makes being a journalist really tiring. Not sometimes, but a lot of these times. Imagine you're dispatched to cover an election only to get to the grounds to cover the outbreak of violence. Without any warning, you are greeted with gunshots, gunshot wounds, slaps and gory scenes you didn't really psych your mind for. It gets even more confusing seeing sacks in official state vehicles attacking ordinary people like voters and then slapping leaders of the nation like a member of parliament. I thought this was meant to be a by-elections. <laughs> Look, you won't have the luxury of time, you will be thinking. That was probably a by-election, but you won't have the luxury of time. When others are running away from danger, you as a journalist are running towards the heart of the danger to get the best pictures, to get the best interviews, all that at the peril of your own health and sometimes at the peril of your own life because if you're not lucky, some of these people may not like, like you and they may assault you. Now, on the grounds, fake news is also rife. Who will help you verify the information you are gathering, whether it's coming from part A, part B, and they're trying to confuse you and, you know, sway the public in their way. But again, I thought this was just a by-elections where people are supposed to come to the polling station say bye-bye to the ballot papers, and then walk away. But no. Well, this is Backpage, your new satirical show on City TV. My name is Caleb Kuda. So what? started as an amorous pre-election development. Uh, the Ayasu West Wogan constituency degenerated into a bloody by-election violence. We will go into those amorous pre-election developments later. But for now, a closer look at the shocking part. This is so wrong. On every score. But no matter how long it takes. No, that was really sad. That was really, really sad. Look at those heavily built men assaulting the, you know, cute lion of the tribe of Judah. And my brothers and sisters, this is really sad. There is so much we can deduce from this particular video, yeah? But see, there is nothing to celebrate about this. We must really condemn it. Now, if anything, it reduces the value Ghanaians place on the new patriotic party as a more intellectual of two self-seeking cohorts of political parties enriching themselves in tens after every eight years. But as a young man, there is one lesson I pick from this video, maybe two. 
Did you see the immigration officer in, in the video? Let, let's play it again. Just take a look. Take a look at it. I mean, this immigration officer just walked past as if nothing was happening. A brother, in other words, get matter and see. That's when you will know that good Samaritans have gone extinct in this country. He just walked past. And the, the second point was, you need to select your fights, you know. Find those that are targeted at you and those that are not. You need to find fights that are your size. The man... He just walked past. He's a security officer for crying out loud. He saw what was happening. I would have thought like he would try to intervene or something. He also realized that these state-sponsored tags were heavily built. They were in state vehicles. They were masked. So in the face of such brutalities, really, the NDC pulled out of the elections. Today is a very sad day for democracy, and the NDC as a party cannot and will not be part of this exercise. Therefore, we are as our agents to withdraw. But politicians are an interesting bunch of people. In, a, in another twist altogether, they say that the NDC rather chickened out. And now, Having done this disservice to the country, how are the NDC leadership going to show their faces to their people? Having abandoned them with cowardice in the field, having led them to abandon their civic duty in the field, how are they going to face them and lead them going forward? We hear about 10 people were injured, some with gunshot wounds, ex wounds etc. Is this a mock rehearsal for 2020 and the two political parties trying to give us a foretaste of 2020? Certainly, this is not a good story under a human rights championing. But when we return from this break, we will tell you there are more things politicians do for power. City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi-TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV. It's your world. Cosmopolitan. New experiences. Social media. Blazing conversations. Fashion. Life hacks. All of this and more. This is our scape. This is your scape. Join Apioko Ashon Abe and Emma Fachikata on Cityscape, right here on CTTV. Every Saturday at 4 p.m. Welcome back. This is Backpage. I am Caleb Kuda. Now, if you are distressed at the horrible nature of your roads, distress no more. We have found a solution that is more effective. That will help you get the roads you want. That solution will be faster than your planned demonstration of burning ties and getting the media to run reports by elections. Yes. By elections, though today we are learning it can turn very bloody. By elections are the way, the truth, and the light. 
no constituency can get horrible roads fixed overnight, except through by elections. Because any incumbent party will literally buy your votes with the overnight development and soon abandon you. You can see from these videos and, and these pictures we're showing you from the Iowa so West were gone, uh, uh, the, the constituency overnight. Great development roads people were yearning for were being fixed with drains. Look at them. Amazing stuff. It takes the power of by-elections to get these roads fixed in the middle of, and you know, a, a, a presidential tenure. It takes by-elections. Hopefully, it doesn't have to require the death of a sitting MP, you know. But some constituents of Iowa will go and say, earlier, driving on their roads was like a torture. These days, dear, the roads feel like, ho, ho, ho. It's so smooth as an aeroplane on a runway just about to take off. In fact, asphalt, puppy, in effect, I also electoral area has N1 quality of roads, even in their lungu lungu, you know. But posters are projecting that these road developmental projects you are seeing will stall after, after, after the results are announced, just after the results of the by-elections are announced. But if I were you, I would pray for a by-election in my area or my constituency for a quick fix of my bad roads, I am certain they will come with street lights and covered drains as well. Hopefully, like I said earlier on, no one would have to die. If they are not good people, especially like Mr. Boatia Jakun, the late MP for Ayawaso, right? Now, the opposition candidates in um, Ayawaso prior to the holding of the elections didn't take kindly to the developmental projects at all, at all, at all. While people were enjoying and happy with the projects, the opposition wasn't happy. See why? Three o'clock in the morning, I was woken up by uh, heavy earth moving equipment and all that. When I got out, I had these huge trucks with bright lights fixing the roads. So I was surprised. But of course, I could connect the dots. And I said, well, they are doing this because of by election. From what the ground is saying, I will win this election. The, f the most important thing is that MPP made a mistake. They chose a woman for sympathy votes, but they got it very wrong. But it's an abomination for somebody from voter region whose husband is in the morgue to want to sit where the husband was sitting. So that alone puts me ahead. Did I hear right? No, I'm surprised. Let's listen to M Mr. Uh, Delali Koblan Brimpon again. Let's, let's just hear him again. <laughs> I'm quite surprised. From what the ground is saying, I will win this election. The, f the most important thing is that MPP made a mistake. They chose a woman for sympathy votes. But they got it very wrong. But it's an abomination for somebody from voter region whose husband is in the morgue to want to sit where the husband was sitting. So that alone puts me ahead. <laughs> oh well, some say the Larry Kumla Brimpon's take on his key contender is a low blow. You know, because really, a man can contest an election the next day after the death of his partner. A woman does same, and it's an abomination, it's a crime. And then again, it's not like the man was still in the morgue. Like, he, he's been buried, okay? It's, I found it very troubling that the Lady Kwamna Brimpon thought that his, yeah, his chances were bright. He says the ground tells him, I didn't know when the ground had their mouth to start talking, but the ground tells him that his opponent has committed an abomination, and so it puts him in better stead. Maybe some say this is why the NPP thinks indeed the, the, the NDC chicken out, but it still doesn't justify the violence we saw. And it's really a big shame on the part of the NPP. Clearly, this was a state-sponsored thug, right? But Madam Lydia Sarah Malhassan has not been free from reasonable criticisms either. <laughs> Mr. Ramon, 
underpass na ube jina hobe 30 minutes and sana kaba kwa babe chum and sana wababe sinko no ah eja kuno go sheti ya 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 no sata ne ya ba election ana mi pamu shoro e denya e si en chen hai ye si ne ba election wa hua na afe a den jowunu kwa ino ne ba election wa hua na afe a den and I hear Cassa by election, ain't in a year developing crew. Hey, say a year, dear, and yet be no fool. I dear, yeah, yes, sir. Crow no more back way, Nimono, say, and yet be no fat. Miss Ramo, San Crofono, Miss Ramo, I dear, yeah, yeah, and yet Juma, yeah, Bab, yeah, Swaso, and I made the Akra, made they come home. Casa Lydia, Casa, San Yer, Bimude, yo, just to trust in your go. Anyway, uh, to the men out there, sometimes the ladies say they don't like the way you touch them. I think that was really awkward. I don't know if you felt so, but I said, Yente, Yente, Nanado, Abre, like we need to get out of here. It's fascinating how uh, politicians take credit, you know. The tunnel she was talking about was done under the John Mahama administration, if I remember correctly. But her husband was MP and she was in the MPP and she's claiming the credit. I'm sure the NDC will also claim the credit for that as well. But what, what for me is fascinating and, and rather awkward is that the very venue, you know, the La Presbyterian basic class of schools, I think, the very venue where the rally itself was held exposes the intentions behind these quick fix pre-wedding or pre-election photo developments. Is it because that building behind her was or is an 18 unit school block, an 18 unit block completed some years ago. It is still under lock and key. And you know what's happening? Whilst it's lo under lock and key, pupils and their teachers are cramped into a wooden structure behind the building. This is what some Ghanaians call Amuro's pre-election pictures. Others say it is things we do for power. So, Delali Kwesi Brempong, I inadvertently said Komla earlier, Delali Kwesi Brempong was not too happy you know, with the developments and he felt that uh, the fact that Madame Lydia's husband was dead is a bad omen for her and she was going to win and some feel that was a low blow and earlier they also complained about the development saying it was meant to sweep or sway votes for them. Now, Madame Lydia says, no, those were not for votes. We were doing this all along. If that's the case, why isn't that school open? As a mother, you know, people are saying you're Batampa and all of that. Why hasn't that school been open? Well, suddenly, it's, uh, Mr. Suddenly, suddenly, just as an ordinary election, you know, to say bye bye, turn into gunshots, fighting. We are told one was dead, but it's not true. We must be proud of ourselves. Now, some Ghanaians say they are no longer suffering, okay? And they say that they're not just suffering, no. they are suffering. Are you all suffering? Are you all suffering? Are you all suffering? While some Ghanaians are saying we are suffering, His Excellency the President, Adam Kufado, says only the blind and deaf cannot see the developments under his tenure in the last two years. Now, feel me annoying. I just want to be a friend. And now, I swear to you, and I want to be who's a MPP, a buy up, I say, I'm part. Yes, yes, your man, your teacher, your man, Eba. The president, not too long ago, he himself said that we've had to go through hard times because of the bad economic management of the John Mahama government, but better days are ahead. Today, it's a different narrative. Apparently, all the development the Kufado government has been trumpeting wasn't inclusive after all. Again, it seems the president admits that the more than 5 million Ghanaians living with disabilities were not meant to enjoy or feel some of the development. This is interesting because some say 
the president himself has been a victim of such discriminations, you know. For a long time, people have focused on, you know, his, I mean, uh, people have said that uh, his, he can't be president because, some even say he can't be president because he's too short. Can, can, can you imagine? Even when, I mean, he chose to make a peace statement no long ago with his apparel, instead of a vain fashion statement, Ghanaians were like all over the place saying, his appearance would have been better if only he was a bit taller. How can you even say these things about your president? And we we're still condemning such comments. Only for His Excellency the President himself to take us all aback. Anyway, we must commend those who handle the president's wardrobe, you know. Always timely and on point. I see many of my guys, many girls, many people... You know, they are picking the president's style, doing more African prints, and some have even instructed their tailors to make their flaps more generous, like we saw in the Yellow Challenge. Look, we'll take a break here. When we return, does your king or overlord has a taste for finies? <laughs> This is City TV's new satirical show, Backpage. My name is Caleb Kuda. Now, the Yellow Challenge gathered steam on social media thanks to President Kufado's peace statement, fashion statement. Well, before we could say, Jack, the Finese Challenge rudely interrupted a trend, taking over social conversations. I've just realized he is wearing a rolex watch it's a beautiful and then an expensive watch i want to find out does he have taste for uh finese i saw yesterday in the video uh, when he saw his jaguar he smiled he was happy does he have a taste for finese and also was it his uh, specific request that he should be given a jaguar many condemned the rolex and jaguar questions calling such condescending, especially how the journalist handled the watch of the new Yana. Some others say, oh, it was a lighter angle to a very serious conversation. But comparing the condemnations to the excuses made for the journalists, one can tell boys, boys, and guess, guess, a mini brother, not all. <laughs> they have really been waiting for him to fall on their case. He has since apologized, though. And hopefully, learning from his lessons that in Ghana, you was know, Now, many received the news of a ban of corporal punishment by GES in Ghana with great delight. But following the conduct of two members of parliament, these otherwise happy fellows are reviewing their thoughts. A section of them say, if some parliamentarians can sink so low to the point of pandemonium and absurdity in the House of Parliament, and these members of Parliament managed to transform the Chamber of Parliament almost to a Bukum Square, maybe, just maybe, corporal punishment should be maintained to instill a little more sanity in the next generation before they do the worst during their time in the Chamber. Others say, no, 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 no. Ban corporal punishment in schools, but introduce same in parliament. They say there is no point promoting deviant MPs to the Privileges Committee. Lash them instead. <laughs> or get them to kneel down. But I'm like, oh, ho. I mean, how can you lash or ask your MPs to, to you know, kneel down? Hey, you can't say this to people who are supposed to be honorable. You know? Not even when some of them illegally over the years, got visas for their wives, girlfriends, and family relations. So they go abroad without returning under the guise of, you know, formal or official travels. The national embarrassment then, em embarrassment then was really huge to the extent that representatives of our colonial planters in our day once had the infantry to suggest that our former heads of state and state ministers of state will have to form queues at their embassies when seeking visas. Even then, 
what did we do to those honorables for that embarrassment? Now, just because two MPs displayed qualities typically identifiable with drunks in a village, I mean, it doesn't mean we should, <laughs> we should introduce corporal punishment in parliament. Um, are you pa? Besides, the fact that someone is held to the Privileges Committee doesn't mean they are being promoted necessarily, as some people think, with additional privileges. But if you don't get all these, I am saying, watch this. Now, if you analyze that video a bit closely, Honorable Muntaka Mubarak once said to Maru Sanda Amadou on, on Eyewitness News that uh, he was brought up in the jungle and that he will deal with the Honorable Kenny Japan. If you watch the video, uh, you realize that the man was walking away when this guy tried. Just take a look at this. <laughs> Certainly, Obia was the master, but we are told that people are going to appear in the Privileges Committee again. We don't know if people will be taking certain allowances one more time for, 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 for that. But uh, some are saying that our MPs, particularly some of them, are becoming notorious and that they lack finesse. The difference, though, is that no matter how absurd the conduct, one is able to always bulldoze his way and become untouchable. When we say make money, you say that be that. Anyway... Maybe we should stop saying equality before the law because it looks as though if your family has patented that poverty and your financial fundamentals are weak, then the justice system will disown you. You never can get to be equal before the law. Except, of course, the only time is when an MP is abused just like any commoner. But no, in fact, between you and a rich law-breaking lawmaker who is louder than a village town crier and more abusive than the city's king of drunks, the law will always protect the latter. But you can't say these things out loud. Oh, shit. Because even though some MPs consistently drag the name of parliament to the pigree, you would rather be held before the parliament for contempt for expressing your views. So these things, you can't be loud about them. As if the conduct of some of these MPs elevated above the nation's laws are not contemptuous enough. Look, let's end it. Let's go to Nigeria, where we had a very... Uh, interesting moment. That's how we end today's edition of Backpage. My name is Caleb Kuda. Do want to follow us on YouTube, City TV, GH, and find Backpage. And if you went to Facebook or Twitter, at Caleb Kuda on Twitter, Facebook, Caleb Kuda. Let's make time, same time, another time. Do have a good time.